In this tutorial, you'll learn how to evaluate functions. By the end of this video, you should be able to say that you can read function notation, that you can determine if you're looking for a function's output or input, and that you can perform or undo the operations in a function rule. So let's start talking about function notation. So functions are indicated by a symbol, oftentimes f parentheses x, and this is read as f of x. Other letters can also be used to represent functions, and these are some very common examples. f of x, g of x, a of n, h of r, t of d, and so on. Now it's important that you understand that the first letter out front, that's the name of the function. So if I say that I'm talking about function a, that would be whatever rule will come after that letter. Now the number inside, the, or sorry, the letter inside the parentheses is telling you what the input value represents. So oftentimes, if I have a function like this, and I have a rule over here that tells me what the function does, this variable has to match this variable because this says I'm a function named f and my input goes wherever the letter x is. So if I have a function named a and I have an input of n, then I cannot put the letter x on this side. The input has to be represented by the letter n. So something like this could work. That would be appropriate. Again, this part out here is really just telling you the name of the function and what the letter is that the variable is that you're going to use inside the function. It's not different than this. The issue with this is that every function was called y. And so now when we use this function notation, f of x, g of x, a of n, it really allows us to be more specific and telling of what it is the problem's talking about. So remember, you started learning about equations using the letters y equals, and all we're going to do now is change that letter y to f of x, or g of x, or a of n, etc. The most common in the beginner learning stage, though, is f of x. So we'll stick with that today. Now, the next part of today's lesson is that you can evaluate a function and that you can determine whether you are actually trying to find out what is coming out of a function in output, or whether you're trying to find out what went into the function in input. And that's what these two things up on the screen here represent. This says, go to function f and put a five into that function rule. And this sentence says, go to function f and figure out what was put inside. So that out came a five. So in this one, you're going to determine the output because you were given the input. But in the second sentence here, you're trying to determine what the input was. And that's different. And you need to be very careful that you know which one you're looking for. Because when you're trying to determine the output, you simply put a number in and you do some basic math computation. But if you're trying to determine an output, you need to undo some math to figure out what it used to be. Right? I didn't finish those problems right there, but I'm just trying to give you a little preview of what's to come. So again, if it says f parentheses 5 or f of 5, that means you have an input and you're going to put in a 5. But if it says f of x equals 5, that means you have the output, and you have to work backwards to figure out what the input was. For the first example here, 3x minus 8, I'll show you again what it looks like when you are given an input. So if you have f of 5, you substitute the value of 5 into the variable position for x. Once you do that, you get a 15, 15 minus 8 is 7. Now this is not math. This is the name of the function and what you're putting in. It's like a set of directions. So you don't do anything like this. You don't do anything like this. You're not trying to isolate the letter f. f is not the variable. f is the name of the function. 
the variable is x. So this sentence right here is the answer. It says if you go to function f and you put in a 5, out comes a 7. That's a sentence. Now let's do the opposite. If you go to function x, f and you put something into the letter x, out will come a 5. So we're not going to put a 5 into the x position. We're going to put a 5 into the f of x position or the y position. So let's take a look. If I put a 5 into the f of x position, then I still have a variable. So I isolate that variable by using the addition property of equality, and then I get 3x. Oh, I have a typo here. It should say 3x equals 13. And then I divide by 3, and that's how I got that final answer. So if the input was the fraction 13 over 3, the output would be a 5. All right, let's take a look at a new problem. Given the function f of x is equal to x over 3 plus 7, do the following. A. Explain what the function rule does to convert the input into an output. This is what the function does. So we can say it divides the input by 3, then it adds 7. That's what the rule does. Any input you give me, we're going to divide it by 3 and add 7. So now it's asking us to do that two times. Take that function and input a 6. So that means 6 divided by 3, then add 7. So the math would look like this. If I go to function f and input a 6, instead of the letter x, I'm going to put in a 6 and then follow the rule. Divide it by 3 and add 7. Now if you'd like, you could put your next answer down here, like this, and continue the story. Function f with an input of 6 is equal to 9. Or, some people, when they just have some basic math computations, put another equal sign on this same horizontal line, which usually I never recommend. But in this case, since it's straightforward computation and you can use a calculator, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 plus 7 is 9. So you could write it like this, or you could extend it down below like this. Again, you're not isolating f. f is the name of the function, and it's telling you the directions. Now let's try the other one. What if the input was negative 9? Right? What if the input was negative 9? Well, we're going to follow the same rule. If I go to function f, and input a negative 9, I'm going to get a negative 9, and I have to divide it by 3 and add 7. So if I go to function f and put in a negative 9, the answer is going to be 4. Negative 9 divided by 3 is 3, negative 3, negative 3 plus 7 is 4. All right. Do you think you're ready to give it a try? Pause the video and see if you can try putting these values into the functions and getting their appropriate outputs. Good luck. Okay, you ready to check your answers? Let's see how you did. We'll go through one by one. Here's the first one. f of x equals 3x plus 7. Again, you can write your answers on all different lines showing each work step, or you can show your substitution and solution in one horizontal line. These are not two separate sets of answers. This is uh, me just showing you, well, these actually are two answers. Um, these are me showing you two methods, All right? One method is to do each of your math on its own line, and another method is simply to write it all on the same line. Let's take a look at letter B. And letter C. How did you do? All right, so that's the easy part of evaluating. I give you a number, you put it in, what comes out? All right, take a look at question C. Find the input for which f of x equals 13. Show the work that leads to your answer. Now be very careful, this one is different. 
right? It doesn't say f of 13. It says function f, when you put a number into the exposition, will have an output of 13. So this time we're going to plug the number 13 into the answer side. So 13 goes on the left and the entire function rule remains unaltered and as is. You use your basic property of equalities here. Isolate your letter X and then you'll get your final answer that if the input was 18, that's how we would have gotten an output of 13. So x has to be 18 in order to yield an output of 13. Why don't you try finding an input when given an output on your own? Pause the video and try question D. All right, let's see how you did. Remember, 10 is the output, so it goes on the left-hand side of the equation. So you need to use your inverse properties to work backwards to figure out what the input was. And the input was 9. All right, so those are the basics of being given an input or being given an output and finding the respective value. Why don't you try these two questions on your own and see if you've been able to hit the learning targets. Pause the video now. Okay, let's take a look and see how you did. Question A gives you an input and you had to find the output of 9. Question B gave you an output, and you had to find the input of negative 3 halves. All right, what we're going to do now is a bit of a stretch. We're going to take what we've learned, and we're going to apply it to something a little bit new. So up here in example number 1 is what you just learned, and down here in example number 2 is something a bit different looking. So you already know what F parentheses in a number means. It means you put that number in and find out what comes out. So what does this mean? Well, if this wasn't here, you would know what it means. You go to function F, plug in a negative three, and see what comes out. So since this is added at the end, that must mean that after I go to function F and plug in a negative three, and see what comes out, whatever comes out, I'm gonna add one to it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to function F, we're gonna input a negative three, we're gonna figure out that our answer is 12 plus seven, which is 19, and then we're gonna add one to it. And that's it. That wasn't so bad. Let's take a look at another example. Let's stretch a little bit further. Here's my function f, and look at this one. The input is the letter t. And that means that whatever you put into t, I'm gonna cube it, and then I'm gonna double it. Right? I'm gonna cube it, times it by itself three times, and then I'm gonna times it by two. That's called doubling. Now look at this question. <laughs> Again, if this wasn't here, you'd be pretty confident that you know what to do. You go to function f, you put a negative 3 in here, you cube it, you double it, you're done. So whatever the answer to that number is, what we're going to do is do the same thing here. Go to function f, plug in the number 2, get our number. So I had two inputs, I got two outputs, and now the problem just says whatever your outputs are, we want you to subtract those numbers together. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our first input and we're going to enter a negative 3. Then we're going to subtract our second one, which is go to the function and input a 2. And that's it. Now I can certainly do this piece by piece and do all the math myself, but I don't recommend that. Whenever you're asked to do some com computations, take out your calculator. There's no sense in making a silly mistake. You're going to type exactly what you see. 2, parentheses, negative 3, parentheses, raised up to the third power. Then arrow over, 
write your subtraction sign to parentheses 2, parentheses raised up to the third power. And you're going to get your whole answer complete in one step, negative 70. Done. All right. Now let's take a look at this fourth question here. Let's think about this. I want to go to f of t, and then whatever's there, I want to triple it, and then I want to add 2. Now this one is really crazy looking. You know why? Because there's still a letter t in it. In all of these examples, the inputs were numbers. But look at this example. The input is algebra. So I want you to remember that. If your input is algebra, your output will be algebra. If your input is a number, your output will be a number. But if your input is a letter, your output will be a letter. Now, there may be numbers around it, like this right here, but you're not going to magically just get a single number as your answer. Let me show you what I mean. This says, I want you to multiply 3 times whatever the function rule is for, for f of t. And the function rule for f of t is 2t to the third power. So that whole thing is going to go right here. Then when you're done, they want you to add 2. So all you're going to try and do here is simplify. Can you take away any parentheses or brackets or addition signs or powers or things like that? What can you simplify? And this one actually is very little work because there's very little that can be done. The only thing that can be simplified are these brackets here can be removed if I triple this. And by tripling it, meaning multiplying 2t to, you know, uh, three times, I want 2t to the third plus 2t to the third plus 2t to the third, right? So when you triple something, you add it up three times. Then I'm really just going to get 6t to the thirds. The plus 2 just has to stay at the end. And the reason is because 2 is a constant, and this is a variable term, so they're not alike. And if you can't do the math, you leave the math. So that's a pretty big stretch, but at least you've got the basics and a little bit extra on how to evaluate functions. Now, if you'd really like a challenge, then keep on listening. Here's my last example for you. Going back to the function we worked with earlier called f of x, which divides input by 3 and adds 7, what would happen if I asked you to create a new function called g of x? And g of x rule is this. I want you to double whatever the answer to f of x is, and then I want you to take away 1. So if my input is going to be 6, that means anywhere I see the letter x, I'm going to put a 6. So here's my function g, and it says the x is actually right here. So I'm going to put a 6 right here. So that means I now have this, 2 times the function f with an input of 6 minus 1. Well, we need to figure out what this is. What is the function of f equal to if its input is 6? So instead of writing it this way, I'm going to write it this way. Because that is function f. And if its input is 6, it would look like this. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 plus 7 is 9. So my next step would be to double 9 and then subtract, whoops, then subtract 1. Double 9 is 18. 18 minus 1 is 17. That one was pretty crazy looking, but the math isn't really that hard. It's just kind of a lot of steps to say, hey, in order to compute g, you have to go find f. And once you find f, you just plug it back into g's formula, which is doubling this input and then subtracting 1. So that concludes the video on evaluating functions.